Hello, I'm Donald, and welcome to this series where we dive into the fascinating world of humanoid robotics. In today's video, we're focusing on the incredible science and engineering behind robotic hands, their anatomy, design, and how they replicate human dexterity. Robotic hands are marvels of modern technology, bridging the gap between machines and human-like interaction. By exploring their mechanics and innovation, we'll uncover what makes them so essential to the broader field of humanoid robotics. Whether you're an enthusiast, a student, or just curious, this journey into robotic hands is designed to inspire and inform. Let's get started. My fascination with robotics began years ago, inspired by the iconic scene in Iron Man where Tony Stark meticulously works on his Mark II armor, particularly the arm. Watching that blend of engineering and imagination sparked something in me, the realization that machines could be crafted to move, react, and function like extensions of ourselves. I decided to take that inspiration and start small, focusing on the hand, one of the most intricate and expressive parts of the human body. That decision launched my journey into the world of robotics, where I learned that building a robotic hand isn't just about the mechanics, it's about understanding anatomy, design, and the endless possibilities of innovation. Robotic hands have found their place in a diverse range of real-world applications, demonstrating their versatility and importance. In prosthetics, they empower individuals with limb differences by restoring functionality and enabling natural movements. In manufacturing, they excel at precision tasks like assembling intricate components as well as improving efficiency and consistency. Healthcare benefits from robotic hands during surgical operations, where they assist in minimally invasive procedures. They can also be prevalent in caregiving, where they help with tasks requiring a gentle touch. In research, robotic hands enable scientists to study complex interactions and test new materials or designs, such as the following examples. The shadow dexterous hand is renowned for its exceptional range of motion and lifelike design making it a valuable tool for research and teleoperation, also known as remote control. The Open Bionics Hero Arm has revolutionized prosthetics with its affordable, customizable, and functional design tailored for users of all ages. And NASA's Robonaut Hand, designed for use in space, demonstrates incredible adaptability, allowing astronauts to perform tasks remotely or assist in maintenance aboard spacecraft. These examples highlight the ingenuity and potential of robotic hands in shaping our future. Robotic hands come in various designs, each tailored to specific applications and functionalities. The first category is anthropomorphic hands, which closely mimic the structure and movement of human hands. With joints, fingers, and even lifelike proportions, these hands are designed for tasks requiring precision and dexterity often used in research and prosthetics to replicate natural human movement. Next are adaptive hands, which prioritize functionality over resemblance to human anatomy. These hands are designed to adjust their grip dynamically to accommodate objects of various shapes and sizes, making them ideal for industrial settings or everyday tasks where versatility is key. Finally, there are soft robotic hands, which use flexible materials and innovative actuation methods like air or fluid pressure, to perform tasks. These hands excel in handling delicate or irregular objects, making them a preferred choice for applications in agriculture, healthcare, and environments requiring a gentle touch. Each type of robotic hand brings unique strengths to the table, reflecting the incredible diversity in the design and purpose of robotics. The functionality of robotic hands relies heavily on their control mechanisms, which dictate how they interpret and execute commands. One common method is remote or manual control, where a human operator directly manipulates the hand using devices like joysticks, gloves, or control panels. This approach is often used in hazardous environments such as bomb disposal or space exploration, where precision and safety are critical. 
It also includes manual operation setups where human oversight ensures accuracy in delicate tasks. Another powerful control mechanism, and perhaps the most advanced that most people tend to think of, is artificial intelligence and machine learning. With this approach, robotic hands can operate autonomously by learning from data and adapting to new tasks. For instance, an AI-driven hand might learn how to assemble parts, adjust its grip strength based on object feedback, or refine its movements over time, making it highly versatile in dynamic environments like manufacturing or healthcare. Another advanced control mechanism is the Brain-Computer Interface, or BCI, which allows robotic hands to be controlled directly by the user's thoughts. BCIs translate neural signals into commands, enabling users, especially those with physical disabilities, to operate robotic hands intuitively. This groundbreaking technology is transforming prosthetics and rehabilitation, creating opportunities for seamless integration between humans and machines. These control mechanisms highlight the evolving relationship between humans and robotics, pushing the boundaries of what robotic hands can achieve. Robotic actuation refers to the process of making a robot move or perform tasks, often through motors, servos, or other mechanisms that convert energy into movement. Essentially, it's how the robot gets things done, by turning electrical signals into physical actions, like moving fingers, rotating wrists, or adjusting a grip. Replicating human anatomy in robotics is incredibly challenging because the human hand is a marvel of complexity. Each finger, joint, and tendon works in harmony to perform an extraordinary range of motions, from delicate gestures to powerful grips. Trying to mimic this in a robotic hand involves overcoming difficulties, like achieving the precise range of movement, strength, and flexibility that human hands naturally exhibit. Each joint must operate in sync, and the actuators, motors and servos, need to provide a level of control that reflects the dexterity we take for granted. In a robotic hand, several key parts are actuated to replicate these movements. The fingers. The fingers are the most dynamic part of the hand, and arguably the most important components to actuate along with the thumb. Thus, each joint needs to bend and extend accurately to perform a range of tasks. Actuators in the fingers allow them to curl and extend, similar to how human fingers grip and release objects. The thumb. The thumb is critical for opposability, allowing the hand to grasp objects. Its movement needs to be actuated independently to achieve a functional range of motion. The wrist. The wrist provides rotational flexibility allowing the hand to move in a circular motion and adjust its position for better handling of objects. The palm. While often less dynamic, the palm's ability to flex or provide support during gripping is essential. Actuators in the palm control its movement and ensure the hand's grip is secure when lifting or holding something. These components must work together seamlessly to create a robotic hand that can move like the human hand, making robotic actuation a sophisticated challenge in robotics. When it comes to actuating the fingers and thumb, these are the most fundamental parts of a robotic hand because they enable gripping, dexterity, and interaction with objects. There are several ways to actuate these critical components, each with its own set of advantages and challenges. Motor-driven fingers are one of the simplest and most direct methods of actuation. In this design, motors are placed at each joint of the fingers, allowing for independent control of each segment. This approach offers precise control and a straightforward implementation, as each motor directly drives the corresponding finger joint. However, this method requires multiple motors, which can lead to a larger, more complex setup, especially if you aim to replicate the full range of motion of the human hand. Motor-driven fingers can also be bulky and may have limitations in terms of speed and fine control compared to other methods. Another popular method of actuation is cable tendon systems, which involve motors located in the forearm that pull or release cables, usually made of strong, flexible materials like fishing line, to actuate the fingers. This method mimics the tendons in the human hand where the movement of the tendons causes the fingers to flex or extend. Cable systems are typically more lightweight and compact, 
as the motors are centralized in the forearm rather than distributed across each finger. They also allow for greater flexibility and smoother, more natural movements. The challenge, however, is ensuring that the cables remain taut and move with precision to prevent slack or uneven actuation, which can cause the hand to behave unpredictably. Additionally, it is important that the hand has a hollow design consisting of open channels for the tendon cables to move through during the actuation process. A more unique method is hydraulics, which offers an entirely different approach using pressurized fluid to actuate the fingers and thumb. Hydraulic actuators are particularly powerful and efficient, providing smooth and strong movements. This method is often used in larger scale robots or applications requiring high force actuation, such as in industrial robots. However, hydraulic systems are more complex to set up and maintain, and they typically require pumps, valves, and fluid reservoirs making them less practical for smaller robotic hands or those designed for portability. Hydraulics also require careful sealing and fluid management to prevent leaks or malfunctions. Each actuation method has its strengths and trade-offs, but when combined with a well-designed control system, any of these techniques can contribute to a highly functional robotic hand capable of performing a variety of tasks. The electronics and programming behind a robotic hand are what bring it to life, enabling it to sense, respond, and interact with its environment. This section explores three essential components, touch sensors, computer vision, and microcontrollers. Touch sensors allow a robotic hand to detect physical contact with objects, much like how we sense textures or pressure with our fingers. These sensors are typically embedded in the fingertips or palm and can measure factors like force, temperature, or even vibrations. This data is crucial for tasks requiring precise control, such as gripping delicate objects or determining if an object has been successfully grasped. However, touch sensors are considered an optional or more advanced feature, especially for basic robotic hands. Their complexity lies in their calibration and integration, as they must provide accurate, real-time feedback without overwhelming the system with noise. Additionally, ensuring durability and reliability in various environments is a significant challenge, particularly for hands designed for heavy-duty or outdoor use. Computer vision expands the robotic hand's capabilities by enabling it to see and interpret its surroundings. Cameras or depth sensors are often paired with algorithms to identify objects, assess their orientation, and guide the hand in interacting with them. For example, computer vision can help the hand determine the shape and size of an object to adjust its grip accordingly. Like touch sensors, computer vision is also an optional and advanced component that may not be necessary for simpler robotic hands. The complexity arises from processing large amounts of data in real time and ensuring the vision system works in varying lighting conditions or with objects that have challenging textures or colors. Integrated computer vision into the hand's overall system requires careful coordination with other subsystems to achieve smooth, accurate movements. At the heart of any robotic hand are microcontrollers, such as the Arduino or Raspberry Pi which act as the brain of the system. These small, programmable devices manage all of the electrical inputs and outputs from interpreting touch sensor data to sending commands to the actuators for movement. Microcontrollers are essential for handling the precise timing and coordination needed to mimic human hand movements. Unlike touch sensors or computer vision, microcontrollers are a fundamental component of any robotic hand. Their programming can become quite complex, especially when multiple subsystems need to communicate seamlessly. Engineers must also consider processing power, energy efficiency, and the need for expandability when choosing a microcontroller for a robotic hand. For if the needs require greater computing power, then more advanced computer hardware may be required. The primary purpose of programming a robotic hand is to control its actuation, ensuring the fingers, thumb, and other components move as intended. 
This involves writing algorithms that translate input signals, whether from touch sensors, computer vision, or user commands, into coordinated movements. Beyond basic actuation, programming also lays the groundwork for more advanced features, such as AI integration, where the hand can learn from its environment or make autonomous decisions. While AI will be an entire topic of its own to be discussed in another video, it's worth noting that the foundation built through programming today could lead to groundbreaking innovations in the future. By combining these elements, whether the basic microcontroller or the more advanced touch sensors and computer vision, a robotic hand transforms from a collection of parts into a functional, interactive system capable of performing tasks with precision and intelligence. In this first part of our journey into the fascinating world of robotic hands, we've explored their foundations from real-world application to the types of hands and their control mechanisms. We also dove into the intricacies of actuation and the role electronics and programming play in bringing these creations to life. This is just the beginning though. In part two, we'll take a closer look at the design process, including the challenges of modeling a robotic hand in CAD and the balance between functionality and realism. I'll also share my personal experience building my own robotic hand from 3D printing and assembly to wiring and testing. Thank you for joining me so far. Stay tuned for part two, where we'll continue to uncover the science and creativity behind building robotic hands.